I get questions from time to time on the history of the path and how it all came about. And the simple answer is, there is no simple answer. To begin with, those who ask this question need to understand that the left-hand path is the radical aspect of an established doctrine. Its history is a part of the history of something greater, if you will. So if we peel away some layers, it does have a history that can be uncovered. I myself had asked many times, who was that first person to, to declare that they were on the path to divinity, to self-deification or sinister illumination? And to understand its past, it's important to know where the path is leading understand its goals, its destination. First off, sinister illumination is not a proclamation. It is a process, steady, ever progressing. There will never come a time when you can announce to the world that as a God, you henceforth reign supreme over all existence. If you think this is so, seek help because you're yearning to be as Yahweh is, and who wants to be that guy? He's one of the more unpleasant examples of mythological characters. What you are striving for on this path is a state of mind, and one, when reached, you must work to retain. And it's important that knowledge, knowledge of the path, comes from more than one source because no one can become an expert in any topic by reading only one book, even though many Christians would say otherwise. Some of you stepped upon the path for the first time when you picked up the Satanic Bible. I would say most of you, I know I did. But I see that as an introduction, an, an introduction to yourself a mirror that you can see your reflection in. Studying other disciplines is imperative in understanding the left-hand path and its past. Study the history of the occult, its pagan roots. Study the history of religion. Study Jungian psychology. Even study magic from a right-hand path perspective. And, I think, the most valid way of understanding the past of the left-hand path is by delving into Eastern mystical traditions. In the West, that ancient tradition, the eternal natural law, which now is referred to as paganism or witchcraft, was all but destroyed by the Abrahamic faiths, namely Christianity and Islam, whose dogmas preach that one must seek salvation through subservience to the divine. And much of what we know of the eternal natural law is filtered through a warped Abrahamic misunderstanding. And many have attempted to revitalize those old ways, but whether they realize it or not, it's often based upon the bastardized Christian misinterpretations. Wicca is an obvious example, as are many forms of modern paganism, like those attempting to resurrect the Greco-Roman, Norse, and Celtic traditions. They're all based upon guesswork and faith, and faith on the filtered doctrines they've read. In the East, though, the eternal natural laws remained relatively untainted for over 5,000 years. It is Sanatana Dharma, or Hinduism. And it is the purest link we have to the ancient Indo-European traditions. Also, and this is very important, this is where the term left-hand path originated. In Eastern traditions, the left-hand path, or the Vamakara, was originally associated with the female aspect in the heterodox way. That is, the reversal of the natural spiritual flow, while the right-hand path, the 
Dashinakara is about going with the flow, the natural course, conformity, and the status quo. Now, to reach self-deification or sinister illumination through the Vamakara, one must go to extremes. And India, as a whole, has a more extreme society than we do here in the West. So to elevate, to deify the Atman, the universal self, measures must be taken to assure that one has reversed the current effectively. And this is not simply done by being a reverse Christian or shouting Hail Satan. This process is all-encompassing. It is immersive. And this is where Shiva comes in. Now, to understand Shiva's left-hand path connections and his connection to Western traditions, it's important to delve into his history. The earliest known horn god we can put a name to was found in India. He is Pashupati. On this 5,000-year-old seal, Pashupati is horned, seated in a lotus position, surrounded by animals with his arms pointing down toward the earth. Now, this is very similar to the image we have of Kurnanos of the Celts, depicted on the 2,000-year-old Gundestrop cauldron. But there is a 3,000-year gap between Pashupati and Kurnanos. Now, there are some questions, and I've asked them before myself, and that is, is this an example of racial memory, or are they different avatars of the same archetypes of the collective unconscious? Or do they both stem from a long-forgotten Indo-European horn god? Or is it all of the above? Who knows? This seal, though, is an anthropomorphic form of one of the most significant finds attesting to the prevalence of a Shiva cult in pre-Vedic India. For Pashupati evolved into Shiva, the left face of Brahman. Where Brahma is the creator and Vishnu the preserver, Shiva is the destroyer. The divine representation of the uncultivated, dangerous, and unpredictable aspects of nature. And as the preeminent god of the left-hand path, Shiva is the ideal personification of the Atman. To put it simply, he represents the deified you. Even though his violent essence is conveyed through metaphorical imagery, Shiva should not be feared, for his fury only burns away the walls of ignorance and self-deception. Some Shaivas, though, have rebelled against the standards of orthodox Hinduism, daring to go to extremes to test the bounds of madness. Believing that Shiva is a representation of the deified self, they make their own rules. And since all things, good or bad, are aspects of the Absolute, nothing is taboo. While chanting, I am Shiva, they, they carry out bizarre sacrificial and sexual rites, eat meat, sometimes human, and alter their consciousness through any means possible. They do all this because they believe it is a shortcut to self-deification. But, and this is very important, they are not trying to become one with Shiva. They don't want to sit in his lap. They long to deify the Atman, to become Shiva, to become the God. So my friends, to help understand the history of the left-hand path, study Eastern traditions. Because their culture hasn't been tainted with the Christian good-bad duality or the real-not-real real argument which has resulted in the gods here in the West becoming vague abstractions. In the East, 
they retain a certain purity reflected in the fact that their gods are complex, multi-dimensional beings, as all Indo-European gods once were. And think about it, for them to be worthy, shouldn't they at least be as complex as we human beings are? Until next time.